Hello, welcome once again uh, about the ignition coil which creates the spark. This is a step up transformer. I was asked how, how come I define this as a transformer. When learning this in school and about how you get a spark, the textbooks tells us the ignition coil is a pulse transformer. So I, the, all the information that I get, obviously, I was taught from the book as well as in school from teachers, but this has less turns on the primary. This is the primary over here. This is the secondary. The secondary goes through the spark. The primary has the DC voltage. See the DC voltage coming from here and then turns of wires, many turns of wires, but this has much more turns of wires. This could have in the thousands turns of wires. The current coming from here, from the battery, goes through here, through the turns of wires, through a switch over here, and back to the battery. Now, this switch is turned on and off. Nowadays, we take, instead of a switch, we put a transistor, which is a device that can be turned on and off to create the same reaction. How is it that, a, that we define this as a transformer? Transformers can can be step up transformers, more voltage on the secondary, or step down, meaning less voltage on the, on the secondary. So obviously, if I have a transformer and I have a step down transformer, more voltage on the primary, less voltage on the secondary, but the current will be much higher. So it's the opposite effect. If the voltage over here, sometimes we get 30, 40,000 volts. If the voltage is higher, which it is, it's an ignition coil, that's what we want. We want a high voltage that can create, can go through the air gap. There's an air gap between here and here. It has to jump it to create the spark. Therefore, we want it to be as high as possible so that we have compression. So we have high voltage, but the current is less. Power output power input has to equal power output okay we don't get too technical but how can you turn this on and off and create a magnetic field these are lines of flux a magnetic field is induced whenever you have current going through turns of wire you have reactance inductance it's called but that magnetic field around it is induced into the secondary over here from here to here how is that possible if you don't have AC? The transformer, if we, if we will define this as a transformer, and obviously I do define it as a transformer, what gives me the right to do that? The textbook. So, it is a pulse transformer, meaning it's on and off, on and off, on and off. AC, in your house, when you're... When the current, when the voltage in your house comes from the from the uh, from the supplier, it is it is uh, supplied across miles and miles and miles of of wiring. That wiring has resistance across miles and miles and miles. You lose voltage across that. How do we make up for that fact? We have to step up transformers. Uh, but that's AC. This problem is, this is DC, yet I'm getting a much higher voltage going to the spark plug. The reason is because once you have a switch or you have something going on and off, a pulse, they call it, you create a magnetic field, but also a expanding magnetic field. It expands and it collapses. That's what you need. When it collapses, when you either open the switch or open the transistor, no current flows. That great impact of the collapsing magnetic field is enough to induce it to the secondary. So here you have a DC going to a transformer, creating a spark, whatever, 40, 50,000 uh, volts, whatever, to each, to each cylinder, that's good enough, good enough to create compression with no AC involved. So, another situation. Here are the here ignition coil packs. Each one, if, if you have six cylinders, this is one and five, two and three, 
three and four. These are the odd cylinders, odd cylinders. These are the even cylinders. Therefore, this one over here, the output, see this little connector? The connector is controlled. Whenever you see a connector, you first thing that comes to your mind is not only B plus and ground, also some form of control or a signal output or input whenever you see a connector. The output goes from an ignition module. The input goes from a, mo a model, a module that they have for Ford. It's like the PCM. The PCM takes the input of the camshaft sensor, the crankshaft sensor, telling it, yes, the engine is spinning. That's a good sign. He says, okay, now we can create and tell the ignition module, perform ignition. Perform ignition means what? Give spark. Give spark where? To what? To the ignition coil pack. That's what, they, that's what Ford is. Okay, so going back to this, the one we had before, the foundation of creating a spark, this was a transistor. Let's take out this transistor and instead put an ignition module. We replace the tran. There are transistors in here and chips. Everything. Everything is in, in there already. So this module obviously creates the spark. Just like we had a switch, just like we had a transistor, but now we put it with a computer module that already has everything in it. So this will create the timing for the spark when it goes on and off, on and off. But who tells it? Where's the commands coming from? This one, this module for Ford. So anyway, please go to all my uh, videos, Joe, Electronics Schematics for Auto. Please watch uh, videos. And the other one, I have more hands-on than the other one. I have to do much more on the other channel, much more hands-on. I will be doing Automotive, Electronic Schematics by Joseph. Then I said I have uh, some hands-on over there. Uh, the weather is getting nice. So hopefully we will support that idea. Thanks for watching.